Hey, what is going on guys, and it's Free. Welcome back to another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video. Today we will be talking about the latest rebirths, the newer units that are coming to the Japanese version of the game. And we're going to break them down, I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on them, and situations where they will be very good or not very good. So we're going to talk about that today. And as always, if you're not subscribed to the Dokkan Reddit, it's a great community with a lot of my friends over there and a lot of people that you can interact with if you have questions regarding the game. So I implore you to go ahead and subscribe to them. They recently hit 30,000, so I'm very proud of those guys over there. So anyways, LR Broly, you guys are familiar with him. You know, I haven't done a whole lot of videos on him, but a lot of my friends have. So he's coming to the Japanese version. I mean... People were telling me he would be a global exclusive. I, I, I thought that was kind of bleh, excuse me. I thought that was kind of weird because we already have two of the ninety percent LR leaders, so it wouldn't have made sense. But yeah, he's coming over here. Nothing much really to say. He doesn't change. Same card. So, anyways, we have an intelligent Super Saiyan God, physical Super Saiyan God, Tech Weiss, Intelligence Weiss, Intelligence Goku Junior, and a SSJ version of the Intelligence Goku Junior from Dragon Ball GT and uh, a Hero's Legacy, the Dragon Ball GT movie. So, if you're not familiar with that. That is basically, I, I believe, a new story event. Yeah, uh, increasing Goku Jr. the Ability System awards, more Goku Jr. maxing Goku Jr. to 100% awards, and Elder Kai SSR. So yeah, uh, one thing to note is, I'm pretty sure it's a new story event. If, even if it's not, they are providing a way to get orbs for that Goku Jr. card, so you can basically make him 100% for free, probably just by grinding that event or whatever they bring with him. You get orbs, special orbs that only work on him, so that makes me wonder if they'll do that for more units. He's not the best, but he's not bad either. We'll get ahead and talk about that in a little bit. We're going to start off in chronological order. We're going to skip the 1, 2, and 3 because we know about those guys. We're going to start with the Intelligent Super Saiyan God. Let's go ahead and open up his card here. And, of course, there should be some translations down here. I didn't even look for them, to be honest. All right, so we do have translations. So his leader skill is 2 key and attack and defense up 50%, so no HP buff for intelligence and STR units. Attack and defense up 80% when HP is 30% or above. He does supreme damage and he lowers defense. It's not a great reduction from what he's listed here. Dimensions of the God, what's that, a 1200 attack boost? I think that's the Warrior God's link. Whatever it is, it's not very significant. Shocking speed, Super Saiyan, over in a flash. Oh, man, he doesn't... Okay, oh, anyways, coming behind, he has Saiyan lineage now instead of prepare for battle. Not sure why, but okay. And Shattering the Limit, so that's the Rebirth link. This is the card art. Uh, really, really good art, to be honest. I love this art. It, it, Super Saiyan God Goku is just very aesthetically pleasing. He looks really cool. So we're going to go ahead and check out his max stats. 93, 9400, rounded up. Uh, 8400 attack and 4000 defense, or 3900, run down a little bit. So... Give my general thoughts on him, right? Uh, it's cool that he debuffs, but unfortunately, debuffing defense is 99% of the time just flat out blatantly stated a useless mechanic. It doesn't really do very much for you. That being said, it's cool that he gets an attack and defense buff that'll allow him to hit pretty hard and tank pretty well on a 120% lead team. He's not going to do that practically on a uh, Buhan lead team because simply because his base stats aren't too high, especially the, the tanking part of it. You know, if he lowered attack and he had like the same defensive stat that he has now, it would be a little bit more viable as far as using him as a defensive unit. But having him on a rotation with LR Piccolo and his 80% defensive buff could net pretty solid defensive numbers from him. You know, obviously, it'll change a little bit depending on what you do with the potential system. So I can see him probably getting 22, 24, you know, something like that, 1,000 defense to where he starts to take normal hits pretty well while dealing out a solid amount of damage. I'd say one. I Let's go ahead and look at his key multiplier. It's 140% uh, key multiplier. So that's actually really significant. SA1, I'd probably expect him to hit for, you know, 150, 200,000 damage, whatever it is. So he'll start to hit pretty hard as he progresses. So is he a bad unit? No. Uh, I just... Looking at it, he's a great option, right? He's a great option for Intelligent Super, but he just doesn't fit on the best possible team. I always make sure that I like to, you know, explain that to people. It's Of course, if he's an, if he's the best you have, fine, right? Because I'm not going to look at it as if everybody has the best possible everything. He's a phenomenal unit. He just doesn't fit onto the best possible. If you do happen to have the best possible, if you're like the 1, five, one or 5% of people that do. So he's a really good unit. I just, I don't know why he didn't get prepared for battle. Like, why say a lineage? It's one key. Prepare for battle is basically linear to the team. Everybody has it. Saiyan lineage and over in a flash are not very viable on super intelligence 
Honestly, neither is shocking speed. It, it, I mean, if you have LR Gohan, more power to you. He has shocking speed. Other than that, I mean, nobody. He doesn't link with anybody really well on the team. I mean, he has rebirth if you have Pandel. So I don't know. He's weird. Let's go and look at Whis. So Intelligence Whis, one of the original SSRs, is finally getting an awakening. He's he's a really old unit, and Whis is actually one of the better ones to come out of this batch. So three key boost, HP, attack, and defense up uh, to intelligence and physical units. Passive is two key, attack and defense up 20% to all allies. There is no restriction on that. That is very valuable, uh, the attack and defense improvement. I've talked about it so many times ad nauseum at this point, but support units are incredibly underrated. This guy is basically going to pop into being an optimal, yes, best possible team for a super team. So, uh, super intelligence team. Overture of destruction, supreme damage, and decreases attack. So, he also debuffs. There's a little bit of defensive value for you there, which I kind of wish that this guy did it as well. But uh, both of them on the same team kind of do this, you know, the attack and defense reduction. And uh, they also link pretty well. Dimension of God, shocking speed. So, calm judgments in there. It's not very viable on the team. Gourmet is. I don't think that works with anybody but Shampa and Beerus, or maybe not even Shampa. Gentleman is okay link in different teams, though. Weiss, tech Weiss having that is a little bit more important than Intelligence Weiss. Shocking Speed and Rebirth. So overall, phenomenal. Like I said, he actually pops into being an optimal unit. You have him, and if you have Pandel, if you don't have Pandel, that makes him a lot more important than if you do have Pandel. If you want to know what Pandel does, she does 30% to all allies attack improvement. No defense, no key, but the two key from this guy actually makes it a little bit easier of a pill to swallow to basically run a guy like him because I'm telling you, just looking at him, unless until more units come out, uh, I didn't even notice over in a flash is with uh, Gogeta. That's not bad. It's just he's not a rotational unit. This guy's a floater depending on what you have. So I don't wanna I don't wanna make it seem like he's bad. He's not. It's just I don't know, just I have a nitpick and I wish he would have got prepared for battle, but just help him so much more than Saiyan lineage. But you know, in hindsight he does start off with nine key at least. You do have this Whis here. Sometimes on rotation two he could start off with basically, you know, max key with Whis on rotation. So I don't know. Uh Super Saiyan God intelligence is really good. He's really, really, really good actually. But Whis is uh He's really good, too. So, anyways, Tech Weiss, two key uh, HP attack and defense up 30% for those types. Passive is attack down 20% to attack the enemy and high chance to stun the attacked enemy. Uh, supreme damage and decreases attack. Dimension of God, same links, actually. They just add shattering the limit. So, you know, Weiss, Tech Weiss is in a weird situation. And I'm going to show you guys the arts, too. Tech Weiss is in a weird situation. He's kind of like... Uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but I did a video, and I, I didn't really break it down individually in a video, so maybe you heard me say it in a video, but, you know, Tech Weiss, oh no, excuse me, uh, his best friend, Tech PyCon, uh, they kind of are in a situation where they can't get a whole lot better because their roles are predetermined. That's not a bad thing. It's just they have predetermined roles where they do the same thing. They function the same. So... Obviously, PyCon, he gets a little bit bigger of a buff. He hits a little harder. He gets first battle. You know, Whis gets rebirth, which is fine. Whis also now debuffs the enemy's attack, so that adds a lot more defensive value. So Whis double debuffs. He does 20%. Um, I assume that it works the same way his stun on the passive does. Whis's, Tech Whis's stun only lasts for that turn. And the attack reduction, generally, when a unit has one like that where they have to attack the enemy first only lasts for that turn. So if he gets a super attack, the super attack mechanic of lowering the attack will sustain, but the one for the passive, 20%, does not stay. And the one problem with the Weiss's passive, Tech Weiss's passive, is he has to hit the enemy. Both of them, you know, he can't stun without hitting. You know, there are some units that just naturally have a chance to stun without even hitting, just simply by them showing up on the map uh, or on the field. And he also has to attack, you know, because there are other units that have debuffing passives that you would kind of want his to be similar to, like Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta and Omega Shenron, where they just show up, regardless of whether they hit the enemy and stuff like that, they get their debuff off. Of course, Vegeta has a little bit more stipulation on that because he has to hit, uh, he has to be there with a extreme type enemy. So an uh, enemy that is a uh, villain character is the only time that Vegeta gets his passive. I'm not trying to compare Whis to a uh, Dokkan Festival exclusive in particular, but it's just showing you guys the differences for that and how that's not that great, but it's a good, it's a good solid ability. It's just not that great because they're is a restriction in that he has to hit somebody so he didn't have a whole lot of room to get better that's really the only real change to him is that 20 percent, which is a pretty significant debuff when you factor in a super attack attack reduction as well so kind of still the same run of the mill card 
you know, just fits into the Tech team if you need him for the defensive purposes. Him and Tech Pycon still do the same thing together. They have a little bit more attack reduction, though. So, you know, a lot of times I would kind of keep, you know, Pycon on the rotation and Float Weiss or whatever I did. Maybe keep them together. But it does give you a little bit of incentive to attack with Weiss before you attack with Pycon to get that additional 20% for the rest of the turn. So that's cool. Last unit is Super Saiyan Goku Jr. Two key HP attack and defense 30% up to intelligence types. Attack plus 40% when he shoots a super attack off. And a high probability of another 40% increase in attack and his defense goes down by 40%. Supreme damage, courage, grandchild plan. That, that must be a new link. You know, correct me if I'm mistaken, Saiyan Lineage, GT, Super Saiyan, Golden Warrior, and Rebirth. He goes TUR. Yes, he goes 120. All these units go 120, so that's pretty cool. They don't have one for physical Super Saiyan God, but, uh, you know, he's not. He's actually not even translated. But I was told that he gets Fierce Battle, and he gets a two-key passive. We'll look at his card. But, yeah, so physical Super Saiyan God. Uh, we'll talk about him after we talk about Goku Jr. Goku Jr. is a unit that's free, and he can go up to... Uh, you know, a TUR, so he's a rebirth unit. He also gets those special orbs, so you can 100% him. He doesn't have very good stats, but that's basically because he gets those orbs, and his, I think his potential system improvements net him up to, like, excuse me, plus 4,000 in stats, so, like, he gets over 10,000 attack, and it's really cool art. I like it. He gets over 10,000 attack. He has a really bad key multiplier, 125. That's really low. That's just kind of to negate the fact that they're giving you a free... TUR 120% or 100% from the potential system, you know, barring how much work you put into him if you deem him as, him as worthy. But uh, the only real drawback to this card is that he lowers his own defense. I mean, in, in nature, looking at him for what he is, he's a pretty solid card. He's not a bad unit. Just looking at him for what he is, he will require some work. It's just interesting to look at him and see maybe this is the way they're going to basically have units. You know, in the game, kind of, it's kind of similar to how Blazing has free units that limit break, right? It's kind of the same concept. They give you this free unit that has the potential to get to X strength, right? To get this strong, but you have to put in all this work. And this is kind of the same thing for him, you know, to be honest. So looking at him like that, it's like, well, maybe this will be something that they do in the future. Maybe they'll get better because they're very cautious with a lot of units. And you can tell even on the summonable units, they're very cautious of making them too dang good. But apparently they don't know that sometimes when they try to do that, it still doesn't work because some units pop out as being way too good. Um, I cite that as probably one of the reasons why Kid Buu doesn't have a key link because he'd be too consistent and hit for too damn much damage. So this guy has a chance at 80% up on his super attack. Uh, that's really good. It's a high chance of, what's that, 50% of the time, whatever it is. Regardless, he has a chance of getting 80% up. The only real drawback, like I said, is he lowers his defense. His defense is naturally not very high, but 40% isn't a death sentence. On a 120% lead team, if you have Gogeta, he's a very solid option if you don't have anything. Similar to how, similar to how uh, Super Saiyan God Intelligence is, it's like, you know, if you don't have something better, run him by all means, all intents and purposes. He is a great option for you. Uh but he's just not the best possible. And Super Intelligence is kind of stacked. Like, that team is actually really, really good. So both of these guys kind of struggle. And he doesn't do himself any favors by lowering his defense. If he just had, like, a 80% up on a Super Attack, even then, and he lowered his defense, he'd still be a lot better because he still gets a free 100% in the potential system. And that's where the, the 125 comes in, the key multiplier. His net damage will be kind of kind of bad, you know, so... He's a, he's a really fun unit, though. I'm going to spend my time in Awaken him. I, I do want to know if you guys will do so as well. Uh, the Beerus event goes up tonight, so these rebirths are available. Let's go ahead and take a look at Physical Super Saiyan God because he didn't pop up in here. So this is... Man, that art is phenomenal. Jesus, that art is beautiful. God dang. I, I, didn't, I haven't even seen that art. That is really, really good. I, I assume this is from where he clashes with Beerus. Uh, fist clashes. And he gets two key passive, and this is Fierce Battle, because he does Dokkan Awaken with the Beerus event medals. So this guy uh, probably pops in as being an optimal STR unit, or uh, excuse me, physical unit. It's kind of weird, because physical has a lot of guys like this that give key and or attack and defense improvements. You have him, you have Pan, who also has Fierce Battle. That's a game changer. The fact that this guy has Fierce Battle is a game changer. Uh, and Super Saiyan, right? Those are two very important links. And he also has Kamehameha, which is a, a nice secondary link. So, you know, they have 
him, they have Pan, they have that 40% attack and defense and three key Gohan that came out with the physical Super Saiyan or physical uh, Super Boo, excuse me. They have physical Bardock, they have Super Saiyan 2, Transcendent UR, Rebirth Goku. They have a lot of guys like this. So I don't know where he will slide in, but he has really good key links and really good links as a whole. I don't think they gave him prepare for battle over in a flash or shocking speed. Yeah, they didn't. Only key link they gave him was Saiyan Lineage, or is this? Yeah, it's Saiyan Lineage. That that's probably gonna hold him back. He's lucky that Gotenks has it. That's probably what's gonna hold him back from being an optimal physical unit, though. They didn't give him any of those, unfortunately. He has a lot of attack links. So, but at the same time, he does give himself two keys, so it's not a death sentence. And he gives the allies two keys, so it's not a death sentence. He may be viable either way. He start off at eight or nine key every turn, so that still will work pretty well. I mean, two or three orbs. I mean. That's not that big of a deal. So anyways, that's it for the units that have come out recently. A lot of stuff popped in. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, punch that subscribe button. If you would consider doing so, I would deeply appreciate it. And also the Reddit, you know, you get stuff like this. So have an awesome day, and I will catch you guys later. Peace out.